Hey, what's up everybody and welcome back to the channel. You already saw the video title, you know what this video is about. That's right, it's the bike we've all been waiting for. It is the 2025 Yamaha YZF-R9. We finally have a successor to the legendary R6. Kind of. At least more so than the R7 that was a huge disappointment to the enthusiasts who love super sport motorcycles. But ultimately, the YZF R9 isn't even here to replace the R6. It's here to carve out its own path and blaze its own trail. So whether you're new to the world of two wheels or you're a seasoned rider, stick around for this video because I'm going to tell you everything that I feel is worth mentioning about the all-new 2025 Yamaha YZF R9. Before we get going, if you are new here, I usually do motorcycle reviews, but with the weather changing and getting a little bit colder, I will be doing more commentary style video in front of the camera to kind of fill the content gaps while I'm waiting for it to get warm again outside here in the Midwest. By the end of this video, if you enjoyed watching it, please consider hitting that subscribe button and leaving a like on it. If you don't end up liking this video, leave me a comment letting me know what I can change and improve upon to earn your like next time. Now that that's out of the way, let's talk about the motherfucking YZF R9, baby. So what's the deal with the R9? What's all the hubbub? What's with all the hype? It's probably important to bring you up to speed to how we got to this point. In 2021, the Yamaha R6 left the US and European markets because it was no longer emissions compliant. The R6 was a super sport legend designed to eat up racetracks, compete against the likes of the Kawasaki ZX6R, the CBR600RR from Honda, and the Suzuki GSX-R600. Based on what I hear working at a dealership day to day, the R6 is regarded as basically the ultimate super sport track weapon, and there's not a lot of bikes out there that live up to the reputation that this bike has left behind. Fast forward to 2022, Yamaha introduces the R7. This bike is based on the already existing MT-07, which uses a two-cylinder parallel twin. And while this motor does sound good, it's not a powerhouse. It has a red line of about 10 and a half thousand RPM and makes a whopping 75 horsepower, which is roughly 50 horsepower less than the R6. And we've seen Yamaha do this before with motorcycles like the MT-10 derived from the already existing Yamaha R1. So it should come as no surprise that a motorcycle based on the very popular MT-09 could potentially be expected at some point to be created by the manufacturer and be released as none other than an R9. But we didn't just take the 6, turn it upside down, and make it a 9 now. No, we have taken an already existing engine and put it into a frame with more premium componentry and sophisticated electronics built around it to give us a proper replacement to the R6 that we should have gotten with the R7. So yes, the R6 did have the aggressive inline four cylinder built for horsepower, along with razor sharp handling thanks to its amazing premium suspension and braking package. Now, the R9's a little different. The R9 swaps out that high revving inline four cylinder for a very punchy 890cc three cylinder cross plane three engine from Yamaha's MT-09. You can also find this motorcycle in the Tracer 900, along with the heritage styled XSR 900. This motor performs very well, making around 68 foot-pounds of torque and nearly 120 horsepower coming in at the 117 mark. And while the R6 does have a very similar peak horsepower number, the great thing about this MT-09 engine is since it's larger, you get a nice boost in low-end and mid-range grunt, and you also don't have to wind it out to the moon just to feel the rush because its peak horsepower and peak torque arrive much earlier in the rev range. And maybe at this point you're thinking, so the R9 just has the same horsepower compared to the R6. Does that even count as an upgrade? It's less about the raw numbers on the spec sheet and more about the feel and how they translate putting it down to the pavement. Since the power arrives sooner in the rev range, the bike should be easier to ride and shouldn't force you to ride beyond your limit chasing and chasing and chasing that high revving inline four cylinder horsepower that the R6 had. And some guys aren't super excited about the three cylinder, but three cylinders have had great success with Triumph motorcycles. The Daytona 675 lives in infamy as one of the best performing track weapons of all time. And now their new Speed Triple 765 is taking the reins over. And we all know how that bike's working out right now. Pretty stinking well. The R9 comes in at 430 pounds. The R6 came in at 421. So there's nine pounds more weight added to the R9 than the R6. So it isn't exactly a featherweight. But before you go knocking that extra heft, think about the benefits. With this added weight, 
it's going to make the bike just feel a little bit more planted and glued to the tarmac, especially in those high speed corners. So stability, check. Speaking of handling and stability, this is where the R9 kind of pulls away from the MT-09's roots. The MT-09 is undoubtedly great for street riding with its upright riding position and the 24.7 degree rake angle. You see, this is where things get really different. The R9 sharpens that rake angle to 22.6 degrees, which means quicker and more precise handling, which is going to improve your tip in at the track or just day to day street riding trying to get better. And whenever you pair that with the shorter wheelbase that the R9 has, which is 55.9 compared to the MT-09's 56.3, we're going to have a machine that turns better, corners better, and just overall handles better. And oh yeah, I almost forgot, Yamaha didn't skip on the stopping power. While the MT-09 has a very adequate set of brakes with a 298 millimeter disc set up front, Yamaha decided to upgrade and beef up the brakes on the R9 and make it a 320 millimeter setup paired to a four pot Brembo Stylema radially mounted caliper. And I think it's because Yamaha recognizes that going fast is fun, but stopping fast is, well, necessary. And the last thing I want to talk about is suspension and tech. For suspension on this motorcycle, Yamaha has incorporated a fully adjustable KYB 43 millimeter, that's two more millimeters than the MT-09, front fork and rear suspension. You'll be able to really fine tune this suspension and get it set up for what feels best to you. And we can turn a blind eye to the R1 derived six axis IMU, that's internal measuring unit by the way, from Bosch that controls all the fun stuff like your traction control, your slide control, your lift control, and more. And this bike is also equipped with an up, down, third generation quick shifter. I've ridden the MT-09 and used the quick shifter on that machine, and if it's the same as that, this thing is phenomenal. It's super smooth, super buttery, and makes riding so much more fun. You get seamless power delivery both ways without the need for any interruption from your clutch hand. So within that measuring unit, you can really tweak those settings and fine tune it for varying track and weather conditions. Alternatively, if you wanna turn it all off, go ahead, really test your skills, just be careful. So that's pretty well gonna wrap this video up. I don't know if the R9 will fill the shoes of the R6. I really don't, but I would certainly like to believe that it can. But we need to remember, it is not a direct replacement. And it doesn't need to be. We're in a new age of motorcycle, a new age of super sport. So this is a totally different kind of beast. It's less about screaming at 16,000 RPM and more about having fun right from the get-go and getting the most out of the machine across the rev range in any scenario. But I want to hear from you guys. Is the R9 the sport bike Yamaha needed? Or do we all still miss the R6's insane top-end rush? Let me know in the comments. I want to hear your thoughts. This video is almost over. If you want to skip to the end, be my guest. Go check out some of my other content where I do motorcycle reviews. But just really quick, I am an affiliate for Revzilla and Rurock Helmets. If you want to support my channel just beyond watching my content, every time you use my affiliate links in the description below, I may be compensated financially if I generate a sale. Oh, if you enjoyed this video, and I mean genuinely enjoyed it, please leave a like on it. I don't want your like if you didn't enjoy the video. If you did not enjoy the video though, leave me a comment below telling me what I can do to improve for the next one and earn your like and your subscription. With that said, please don't forget to subscribe. That'd be super cool. At 20,000 subscribers, I will be taking this helmet off and we'll start doing this face to camera. But until that day comes, and if you're already subscribed, I guess I'll see you in the next video. I hope you all have a wonderful week. Thank you so much for watching. Have a great day. Ride safe.